Hello world. 12 years ago, I was walking through the streets of Kyoto when I turned down a lane. It had a canopy overhead and shop upon shop upon shop. I kept on walking and it seemingly never ended. It was an amazing experience, a kind of thing I'd never seen in Canada before. What I didn't realize at the time was that this was one of 13,000 shotengai, shopping streets, in Japan. Last year, I made a video about a typical Japanese neighborhood, and I was surprised to see people's reactions to the shotengai. They were fascinated, just like I was 12 years ago. So what exactly is a shotengai? The basic definition is that it's any commercial street with more than 30 shops. The feeling, though, if I had to compare it to something I saw in North America, was kind of like a Chinese night market with lots of vendors. Except in Japan, this was not some temporary setup, but rather something that was going on every day of the week. The most common thing you'll see that marks a shotengai are the flags or signs found along the street lamps. And they often have special street lamps. Larger shotengai will have gates at the various entrances. And even larger ones will have covered walkways along the street. The most developed will be completely covered. A kind of outdoor mall. However, shotengai differ in a lot of ways from the modern mall. Unlike them, they usually have no big department stores, and most of the shops are still independently owned. There's no food court, no public washrooms, and you're lucky if you find seating. A lot of the property are also owned by the operators themselves. This is unlike a mall, where space is almost always rented from the owner of the mall. That's why, even in places that seem very commercial, you'll still find owners living above the shops. Yeah, this surprised me. But even in a place like this, there are still owners living on the second and third floors of these buildings. In the busiest shotengai, it'll be pedestrian only for large parts of the day. However, most shotengai don't have roofs like this and cars can freely drive. Although the speed limit is generally 30 kilometers or 19 miles per hour. You feel safe walking or biking around. Shotengai can be found anywhere and everywhere but you're most likely to find them near train stations and areas with a lot of traffic. あの、昔は商店街 Before World War II, there was no real planning behind them, and there was no recognition or status. Shops were set up wherever there was a need. This changed in the 50s and 60s. Department stores and malls were becoming a thing, so the small business owners banded together, and in 1962, they were officially recognized under the Shopping Street Promotion Law. This gave them power, and due to that power, in 1973, a big store law was enacted.商店街の近くにできることを、えっと、禁止してたんですね。で、だからそれがあるので、ま、商店街っていうのは戦後から随分長く持ったんですけども、今2000年に廃止になったので、今あの、ま、商店街近くに大きなショッピングあの、モールを
日本の素晴らしさを体験してもらいたいなとそういう思いでお店をオープンしましたドロクロの中で、うん、日本の中でもう上位の方に入ってくる茶葉です、うんうん、これはどこですか産地は産地を行ってる時点でもダメなんですダメなんですか量より質ですからいいですか、うん、はい、はい、レディーゴーはい、行きますわ、もうすごいいい英語じゃないですか。本当,<笑>本当すごい。<笑>これ世界に、世界に発信したいんですよ、わちは。<笑>飲んだことない。<笑>でも息子さんですよね。まあ、なんかすごいスペシャリストですよね。<笑>ちょっと変態でございますから。<笑>一般向きではないね。もうちょっと入るんじゃない普通の人だったら多分ちょっとねあの人に引っかかったらなかなか帰りづらくなるわね最高五六時間束縛されてんじゃない<笑> I think his mother was exaggerating a bit we only got caught for an hour but then again we didn't stay around to discuss his interest in specialty water this was definitely not an experience you'd get at a chain store the previous store sold wagashi traditional Japanese sweets The next one we'll visit sells bread from the Showa era, which was from 1926 to 1989. k a m i t a k a z u y o d e s h a t o y a p a n t e n o w n e r de f u d a n w a t o s h i k e k a k u n o c o n s u l t a n t o s t e m a s k o n o h a t o y a p a n t e n t e a n o t a i s h o g a n n e n s o g y o n a n d e s n e d e a n o m a e n o g o s h u j i n g a n a k u n a t e m o y o n e n t a t s u n d e s k e d o m o s o n o g o s h u j i n g a n i d a i m e d e a n o z u t t o d e n t o t e k i n i a n o p a n y a s a n o y a t e i t e でまあ、そのパン屋さん本当に私もお客さんとして来てたんですがあの看板もすごい情緒ある看板だと思うんですけど、まあ、それを店ごと売りに出されてしまったんですねあと後継ぎがいなかったもんですからその時に今いろいろ話を聞いたら4階建てに建て替えろうかなとかあの建て売り住宅にしようかなっていう人とかでまあそこであのここの看板を。壊しちゃってこの,あの情緒あるあのコッペパン屋がなくなってしまうっていうのがやはりこう商店街にとっても地域にとっても損失だったなと思いましてで、まあ、それをここを買い取ることにしましたっていうことです。はい、These two traditional shops have been able to stay open despite current trends. But what are the current trends? まず一つはあれですよねそのやってる業種が今の時代に合わなくなってきたというのかな。例えばあの子どものおもちゃのお店なんていうのは子どもさんが減ってるからなかなか、えー、あの経営がやり成り立たないからやめてしまうとかあとまた大きな理由としては子どもに継承できないあのお店を大体その2つが大きな理由かと思いますね。えなんかおすすめってありますそれはこのいちご味噌の粒とこうして両方おすすめで、えー、なんかこれ<笑>あ,あそう本当のあ美味しいこれきゅうりとか野菜つけたらもっと似合いますね,ね,ますねなかなかもうお味噌屋さんってないですよねお味噌屋さんも、うん、もうものすごい勢いでなくなってますからそう多分だからまあね、うちもなかなか厳しい時があったんですけど、まあね、ちょっと新しいお客さんとか来てくださってやっぱり今、最近はあのチェーン店がやっぱり増えていることは間違いないですね、今、うちの商店街でチェーン店は大体2割ぐらいがチェーン店になってます、ただ、えー、と他の大きな商店街と比べると、リスク的には少ない方なんですけども、ただやっぱりだんだん増えつつはありますね。飲食系の,、まあ、あのフランチャイの店とかやっぱりあと多いのは意外とあのお医者さんとか整骨院マッサージの店なんかが今増えてますねそういうのもはい。One aspect that I think is tough to counter is the rise of chain stores. Their hours are more convenient and you know what you're getting. And with general goods, they often can provide better pricing. With an independent shop, you never know. You don't know the hours, you don't know the offerings, you don't know the atmosphere. I don't know about you, but if I go in and browse and don't get anything, I always feel a tiny bit guilty. But on this day, my sister in law, Akko, and I spent the whole day checking out independent shops in and around Jujo Ginza. And I must say, we really enjoyed the experience. Food establishments are the most popular shop type in Shotengai, so that's what we visited. For lunch, we went with some curry and naan. There were, in fact, about a half dozen curry shops in the area. However, as I mentioned earlier, Shotengai usually don't have places to eat, get water, go to the bathroom, or sit down. 
so he walked ten minutes to get to a park. It offered all these things, plus cats. If any of you Shoten Guy associations are watching, I hereby humbly request indoor or outdoor resting and eating areas. This stand up and drink bar was in fact not in a Shoten Guy, although it was close enough, so we went in. The owner only opened up a few months ago, and he's a transplant from Okinawa, Japan's southernmost prefecture. I specifically wanted to go in, despite not being a drinker, because this is exactly the kind of shop that you wouldn't be able to open up in Canada. A tiny bar below some residential housing on a little street. I don't really drink alcohol, but for the video, I went with the weakest one I could find. <laughs> Ako, on the other hand, was enjoying herself. <laughs> After some more walking around, we ended up at a cafe where they happened to sell crepes. So I had to get a crepe. When I hear talk of shops that appeal to a younger crowd, I believe it's the previous stand and drink bar and places like this that they're thinking of. As night fell, it was time to start on some dinner fare. This yakitori chain only consists of three stores in the area, so I think you could probably put it in the independently owned category. Last but not least, we visited an izakaya, and we found that it's been operating for 100 years. The owners are third generation and live on the second floor. Their menu changes based on the season, so when I tried to order the edamame, one of the owners recommended fresh soramame instead. The Osusume Ryori, recommended food culture, is strong with local shops and is a great reason to visit. <laughs> when all was said and done, Ako said she felt nostalgic being able to enjoy the atmosphere and taste of all the local shops. Where she lives, the Shoten Gai has slowly converted into residential housing. As for me, I thoroughly enjoyed the local experience and being able to sample a little bit of everything throughout the day. もうthis statement didn't compute in my head. We had walked around Kira Kira Tachibana on a Thursday and Sunday, and my rough estimate is that at least 25% of the stores were shuttered. Kamita-san's statement of no vacancies didn't seem right. But it makes more sense once you factor in a few things. There are stores that only operate at specific times of the day, like bakeries in the mornings or izakayas in the evening. Since many of the stores are owner-operated, and people need time off, shops can be closed one or two days out of the week. So there's always going to be a certain percentage that are closed depending on the day of the week or time of the day. Kamita-san said that 13 out of the 85 shops have permanently closed, so that's 15% that are shuttered. Since the owners have no intention of renting out, there's technically no vacancies. She also knew of two shops that were shuttered due to renovations. She knew this because her company was in fact doing them, so that's two more shuttered shops that were only temporarily so. Considering those factors, it's very easy to see how a Shoten guy can appear to have a lot of shuttered shops, but in reality, have all of the properties occupied. To get some perspective, according to the latest survey of Shoten guy across the country, the average vacancy rate is 14%. However, this is the average rate. So there will be shoten guy with virtually no vacancy, like Kira Kira Tachibana, and others with 25% or even 50%. But why don't owners rent out their shuttered shops? Owners are generally past retirement age. They've already made their money, and they completely own their shops. They also live above their shops. 
they've actually probably worked past retirement age into their 70s or even 80s. They may have kids who are now in their 40s, 50s, or 60s, and some will take over the shops, but a lot would have gone on to other careers. Owners could rent out the property, but many feel it's more trouble than it's worth. There would be someone working underneath their home that they don't know, and renovations would almost certainly need to be done, and many don't really need the money. Since they are in their 70s, 80s, and 90s, moving to another neighborhood would be tough for them. So, many keep their shops shuttered. There's also the one-sixth tax rule. This rule allowed owners with residential units above their shops to only pay the residential rate, which is one-sixth the regular tax rate. So even when they shuttered their shops, they could still get this discounted rate. The government did away with that rule for vacant shops, trying to encourage them to rent out or sell their property. But since this only affects lot sizes bigger than 200 square meters, many still only need to pay the one-sixth residential rate. All that being said, there are indeed properties getting sold. However, a common occurrence is that they get rebuilt as completely residential units. あ、住宅になったんでしょうか。あの、あの、建て売り住宅に変わっていて、で、あの、もう少し地方の方では、あの、もうそのまま、そこの商店所だった人がもうリタイアして、そのままそこで住んでいて、1回はシャッター閉ま
Provided that tourism returns, it's a safe bet to say they'll continue to thrive in the future. There are also Shotengai that are able to attract new, young shop owners, revitalizing the area. Some people and organizations even work to consolidate several Shotengai into a more compact area, but it can be tricky due to rights issues. だから、ただ、これがいつまでも継続するとは限らないので、ま、それもあって本当に地域に根差していて、単なる買い物の Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace. What are shopping streets like where you're from?